Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 68 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting. Hear from knife designers, makers, manufacturers, reviewers, YouTubers, anyone who loves knives. That's what this edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast is all about. And Bob, a, another good interview today that we'll get into. But first, I want to uh, ask a li- our listeners a favor, if we could. Uh, you and I have chatted about doing a, a special holiday edition. And uh, now, because the way the Christmas day falls, that's on the day we normally issue our supplemental podcast, December Mm -hmm. 25th. So we have kind of a uh, neat idea we'd like to do for that quick edition, but we need our listeners' help. Yeah, well, uh, it'd be great to have people call in and uh, call into the listener line and leave messages about what they want for Christmas, what they're getting for Christmas or the holidays, and uh, how they plan on spending that holiday money at Blade HQ. Or just, uh, you know, give us a knife story. Use it for a chance to uh, plug your YouTube channel or your knife-making company. Whatever it is, we'd love to uh, love to hear from you. And it's really simple. Take a minute or two if you want to leave a longer message. As Bob said, call the listener line at 724-466-4487. That number again is 724 724- Four six six four four eight seven. Just call the listener line, leave a message, something like, "Hey, this is Jim from the Knife Junkie Podcast. You know, uh, please visit us at thenifejunkie dot com. Just want to say I'm so thankful for everyone listening to the show this year. Here's my knife story, funny thing, and here's what I'd like to get for Christmas. You know, just something like that. Just you know, something simple. Whatever you feel like, uh, like telling and sharing with our listening audience. It it might be therapeutic because you know you're not getting half of the things you're going to ask for. So if you just kind of get it out, it might be helpful. Well, and, uh, you know, again, that's our plans for the uh, Christmas Day show, which you don't have to listen to on Christmas Day. If it's uh, if it's after the fact, that'd be fine. But uh, the show uh, is not going to happen without your participation. So if we get one call or 50 calls, we'll have a show. So, uh, you know, that's enough begging right there. 724-466-4487. Love to hear from you. All right, Bob. So uh, interview show today, we have with a YouTube reviewer, uh, interesting uh, nickname he goes by, which is, I guess, the name of his channel, Metal Complex, and he goes by Metal. Yeah, well, uh, Metal Complex is one of my uh, favorite new YouTube channels. He's been around for less than two years, and he has put out so many damn videos. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, as someone who occasionally puts out videos or puts them out in fits and starts, I really respect people who are just constantly, constantly putting out content, and Metal Complex is one of them. He's got uh, excellent taste, and he's got very varied taste. He has, uh, uh, seems like a coterie of viewers out there willing to lend him super sweet knives. So he's got some awesome knives in, in his own collection, and then he gets all these other, he's exposed to all these other knives from his viewers. It's a Quite a great setup. And one thing I really like about Metal is that he's got a number of playlists. He has series. He's like a, uh, he's like a little mini Netflix, uh, for, for, uh, knife videos on YouTube because he's got unboxing. He's got a whole unboxing playlist and it seems like he gets sweet new knives all the time. He's got a quest for the perfect folding knife. He's got quest for the perfect budget knife. Uh, He's got knife guy. He's got a number of, of different playlists. So, Uh, All on his channel, you get a whole bunch of different kind of angles on knife videos. Well, we'll have a uh, link, of course, to his YouTube channel in the show notes page that you can find at thenifejunkie.com slash 68, thenifejunkie.com slash 68. We'll hear that interview coming up in just a second. But first, I want to remind you that uh, Christmas time is coming. We're spending a lot of money on Christmas gifts and holiday parties and all kind of things during the season. So here's a great way for you to save some money. Get the Get Upside app. It's your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone whenever you need to get gas. You search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank. Then all you have to do is take a picture of the receipt with your smartphone. That's it. You've just got cash back. 
So go to thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. That's all one word, save on gas, to get the app, start saving. Again, thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Got a question or comment? Call the Knife Junkies listener line at 724-466-4487. So I'm here with Metal Complex, an opinionated and passionate man about high-quality folding knives with an insatiable appetite for new knives that resonates with me. That was the very first thing that I picked up on when I tuned into your channel. Metal, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, absolutely. I'm really excited to be here. So uh, right before we started rolling, we were talking about kind of the, your signature possession, your signature knife. <laughs> the uh rainbow lady of the sea what is yes. that yes um she uh she is the ruler of my domain uh she is uh she's she's uh, wielding the coveted rainbow steel as i say the cpm rainbow steel and uh the <laughs> the uh the general what i talk about a lot is to see that her her power is that she uh, uh is imbued with a, the strength of every single knife that i have ever unboxed essentially i haven't cleaned her <laughs> So that is the knife that you open every new knife box with. Is that is that right? Yes, it is. And I um I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how that got started. It just started happening, you know. But it kind of seems like unlucky to change it at this point, I would say. It does. It's weird. I joke about um, you know, I say joke, but then for whatever reason I'm unable to stop. So is it a joke or is it uh is there something actually compelling me to use it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those jokes where you're like, you know, you're hedging your bets. <laughs> you know, tie up your camel, as they say. Yeah. So how yeah. did how did you become uh, this insane knife person? Because oh, clearly this is insane behavior. It is. It's insane behavior. Um, but uh, it's uh, it feels good though. You know, it uh, yeah. um, it it's it's like I'm I'm aware of it being a crazy thing. I'm I'm aware, you know, that uh, the the behavior is insane. But I, I enjoy it and it makes me happy, so I'm okay with it. I guess. I don't know exactly how I did. You know, I had, I did a, um, I did a, I have a little knife guy thing that I do on, on uh, YouTube and, and I, I talked about this origins thing. There's a, there's one episode that's actually labeled. It's, it says origins and I talk about my, what I think was the beginning of it where I, I had a fascination with Prince Philip fighting the Maleficent dragon and he had the, he had a sword. And I remember being a little kid and thinking, I like that. I like that thing that he's wielding to to bring down. The, and it, so I suppose it's it's this big epic thing in my head. But it was just a general fascination with bladed objects as a child, and it led up to, you know, getting my first pocket knife. Uh, my dad gave me uh, my first knife, and I and to me that was that sword, you know, from Beauty and the mm -hmm. Beast or from uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty. What was that first knife? It's missing the front plate, but this was my grandpa's Camillus. Um, Oh, like it's yeah. an ancient, it says Camillus right here, but it's missing this back plate. It's got three completely corroded. They, you know, they still, this last one's a, a little rough, but, um, yeah, this oh, is Oh yeah. It. That's a Stockman. Is, is it? I, I didn't yeah. know what it was. <laughs> well, oh, now I know. Thank nice. you. Nice. Oh yes. yeah. That's basically how I got started. Uh, fascination with bladed objects I was seeing in entertainment, you know? Uh, I have a feeling I was a generation or perhaps two behind you, but it was the same thing. It was Daniel Boone or whatever, whatever we watched back then. Uh, but they always had a knife on them. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's, that's what it is to be a man, you know? You know? Yes. And then that was somewhat reinforced, you know, through a grandfather as well and got my first knife that way too. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> so, so now you've been, you've been making videos and you've had a channel on YouTube, the Metal Complex channel for just shy of two years. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. It, it's, uh, something, it's like a year and three. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Absolutely. You're unbelievably prolific. And you have, you just mentioned the, uh, the knife guy series. Uh, but you also have other, you, you do a lot of unboxings. And I don't know, like knives seem to rain at you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit envious, I gotta say. And, uh, and then you have the quest for the perfect, uh, budget knife, budget folding yep. knife. So tell me about your channel. Explain how you how you got started and 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 how you decided to do these different distinct shows. You have you have watched. I'm I'm impressed. I, you know, because I like I I put out so much. I, I I often wonder. I'm like, are the people who are subscribed to me annoyed at getting all these notifications? Or like, <laughs> um, complex is is unboxing and something else or ranting about something else. And I, but um yeah um so the channel started because. In the beginning, I, I worked at a dealership, and these guys that I worked with, who are still some of my closest friends here, 
uh, and my bosses too, they, they knew, you know, slowly I, uh, cause I was into, I had been into knives for a long time. I'd been, you know, dwelling in the forums and doing buying and selling and trading. And I slowly and very carefully got them to want to know what, what I was carrying. You know, I, I kind you know, like you kind of, <laughs> you creep up on people that you want to share the hobby with. <laughs> yeah. This guy, this guy might be a fellow traveler. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, I slowly got, uh, got them into it. And anyway, so once I had this, um, once I had enough people, you know, I had created this normality, you know, in this workspace, um, I started using downtime, um, and my bosses <laughs> will laugh cause I'm gonna, you know, I, I, I'll want them to hear this. They always laugh when they hear me talk about it on the channel. Um, th- I was basically sitting in, uh, some of these new vehicles on the lot and I was just talking about folding knives because I had so many other coworkers who were now carrying, um, folding knives that I had recommended to them. I was like, um, I just want to talk about this stuff and see where it goes. And at first it was just me talking into the joke I always make is me talking into a rectangle and, um, I just kept doing it and it just slowly you know, resonated with a few people. And then now, now we're here. Well, you have a, a very recognizably positive voice. Uh, I think, I think, um, on the whole, a lot of the people I admire on YouTube generally don't tend to do videos where they're trashing products. It's kind of like who has the time to do that in a way, right? Unless, unless, you know, it's always fun to get into the controversy kind of stuff or, you know, say, you know, get on there and say something, you know, totally inflammatory. Like, I think <laughs> the Sabenza is utter garbage and, and then, and then wait and then defend. But, uh, you know, so where does this positivity come from? Is it, is it, uh, explain that. So it, it's, it's weird. I mean, we all have this like weird kind of inexplicable fashion. I mean, when you really dig into it, it, we have this inexplicable fascination with, with cutlery. Um, but, uh, a lot of times, you know, I look at, it's, it's something and I, I just think like here, here's why I think this is good. This is what I think is good about it. And I, I, I like to look at things glass half full because I realize that everybody uses, everybody uses knives for different things, different, um, tasks, you know, are, are more or less appropriate for any particular knife for individual people. So I'm only one person and I only have a, a certain set of, you know, usage habits, but every individual person, you know, is, is from different parts of the country or the world. Um, some people only exist in an op- office. Some people only exist outside. So thinking about that, you know, it's like, there's only a few knives that I've ever picked up that I was like, wow, this is garbage. I don't hmm. like this. And it's completely unsafe. It doesn't cut. It doesn't do, you know, the basics of what a knife should do. For the most part, everything I pick up, whether it's expensive or inexpensive, um, you know, and, and I kind of try to like aim towards certain knives that I have a feeling will be good based on, you know, the manufacturer, or whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I look at it and I think, you know, here's who this would be good for. Not do I think this is good or bad based on my limited, you know, usage habits. I just think if somebody were using it in this setting, then it would be good, you know? And, and so I suppose that's where the positivity comes from, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It's, it's kind of like uh, a question of quality. If you pick something up that's totally not your cup of tea, but you can recognize uh, and you can feel how well put together it is and how well executed it, it is, whether you like the design or you find it uh, useful or not. Um, I mean, to me, like, it's very rare that I pick up a knife that I don't like. You right. know, it's uh, for me, you know, the original flat iron was such a disappointment. Cause God, it's, <laughs> because I saw it and I, I, I originally saw it and I was like, man, that's a beautiful design. I hope they pull that off. I love the proportions and the shape and everything about it. Even the handle looks like it should be comfortable, but you yes. know, I didn't, I didn't get the updated version that, you know, right. Oh, that's so amazing that like, that's exactly how I looked at it and I was like, that's got that cool cleaver blade. Mm-hmm. It's got that forward choil. It looks, I mean, like it's a simple, um, low cost steel frame lock. It's, what is it? It's a hollow ground blade. I mean, yep. it, it looks like something that I could go out and really use and be comfortable with. And I got it and I see where they were going with it. Mm-hmm. Here comes the, here comes the glass half full. I see where they're going with it, you know, <laughs> and it, and it, it still could be something better if they decide to change, if, you know, if they use the different steel and they put G10 on it and they just paid yeah. attention to it a yeah, little yeah, more, yeah. you know, 
But um, but yeah, you know, uh, I I completely agree with you there. Absolutely. That knife to me was the perfect blend of menacing utility. You know, <laughs> it obviously has the utility, but there's something that's a little uh, uh well. Sweeney it's, it's Todd extra. about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's extra. It's like, you know, I always think about like, who am I going to be working around? What would they say about this? Could I justify this as a tool to this person? You know, because we, usually when we're doing projects here, it's just my dad and my brother. But every now and then there's somebody else who comes over and my brain is always thinking, what's going to be my pocket around who? Is it mm-hmm. somebody who isn't into knives? What would they think of this? Is this appropriate for this setting? And the flat iron, you're exactly right. It's something that I think... um this looks like a tool, but it looks like something a little bit extra that might be just interesting enough to whoever I'm going to be around to talk about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of, uh, that's uh, that's my Yojimbo. Like, when I think yeah. about having that and using it in front of people at work who, who, yeah, yeah, Bob, of course you have a knife. They all come to me when they need their <laughs> orange cut or whatever. But, uh, you know, the, the Yojimbo, it's a little bit, um, you know, hmm, that kind of looks like a carpet knife, but, or, or a, uh, not a carpet knife, but a mat knife. Kind of looks like right. a, you know. But uh, utility or, you know, menace. You and I think alike because I look at, see, people, they, they always tell me the Yojimbo 2 is not a, an EDC knife. It's a, it's a self-defense knife. And I'm like, I, I see a tool. Like, I see like a utility cutting tool, you know, but, but uh, and I would totally EDC that knife. I love it. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, to me, that's, that's ultimate EDC, ultimate weapon to me. It's a, it's, it's <laughs> a, go. it's a great combination. That's okay. So that's my approach. You know, I, 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 I am unabashedly, um, into knives as weapons. I've done martial arts training in okay. Kali as an excuse to continue my knife collecting, you know, if you will. So to me, I always, and that's part of that childhood thing. I'm not out there getting in knife fights. I'm not a duelist, <laughs> you know, but, but still that's my, that's the undergirding of my fascination with this. Okay. You know? All right. Cool. So, how, like, in terms of aesthetics, how how important are they to you? Oh man, extremely. But it's it's weird. It's like there are certain classifications. Like, if I'm looking at a knife from a particular perspective, um, and a lot of times it has to do with how much I'm going to pay for it. You know, everybody puts a different value. On different, like some people only put value into exactly how much utility they're going to get out of it, and some people put value into you know what materials are it made out of, uh, uh, or what materials is it made out of, um, you know what, how good's the fit and finish? Does it have a false shut action? Is it made out of twenty CV or Damacore or what? You know whatever. All this little, all these little things. If I'm looking at a budget knife, what I would consider a budget knife, aesthetics mean a lot less to me because I'm looking at, I'm like, if I'm gonna, you know, pay. If I'm going to buy a budget knife, it's very likely, 99.9%, uh, you know, likely that I'm going to be using this. Mm-hmm. So I don't want it to be so aesthetically appealing that I'm, you know, that I'm reserved in what I'll use it for. You know, like, uh, I talk about the Praxis and it's such a straightforward design. I don't, the, the liners here, the color of the liners, the gold liners, is, that, that's yeah. weird to me. Yeah. But uh, okay, whatever. I don't care. I'm not going to be thinking about that while I'm out using this thing. Uh, OD green's not my choice, but it doesn't matter whether it was my preferred plain black G10 and steel liners, which is actually a choice right, right there. So that again, it's just boring aesthetics. Either way, I'm going to reach for this as a tool and I'm going to use it and I'm not going to think about it. Now the hinderer, which ironically is made to be like this, like ultimate user. I care so much for the aesthetics of this and I'm so drawn to it that it's created like multiple layers of irony. You know, <laughs> I, I, this thing probably could withstand, I mean, well, in my mind, the, the hinderer could withstand 10 times what the praxis could. In reality, I have no idea, but I, I'm, I got so lost in the aesthetics of this titanium scale. And, you know, you can see that this is all monochromatic, but it was so appealing to me. And then I'm in, uh, well, I'm just crossing out of what I call the honeymoon phase of a new expensive knife where you're, you're just starting to kind of carry it and use it a little bit. Mm-hmm. You're not overly so protect, you know, I'm doing what I do on my channel a lot. I'm rambling. <laughs> so you can stop. No, me no, no. You need to. <laughs> no, but that's, that's, uh, it, to me, it's, uh, it is the irony because you spend, uh, you know, my, my favorite knife is, is an XM24, Warncliffe. Awesome. And, awesome. uh, you know, you, you, sp- you spend all this money on this thing and you seek it out, you know, always out of season, you know, whenever you have to, you want that certain blade shape, man, it's, it's out of season. 
So you got to hunt it down. You finally find it. And it's a hard use knife. So you better use that thing hard, boy. And you don't touch it or you, you know, you ginger foot around for a while. And yes. then finally it ends up in the rotation once it's old enough. You know what I mean? And other things have come and gone. <laughs> Can I take a guess at your hinder? Cause I am uh, yeah. a huge hinder fan. I'm going to guess that that is, um, so a lot of people like with the new triway system, they call everything gen six, but technically the sixth generation is only the hinder XM 18, three and a half inch. So that XM24 should be the second generation pre triway, so no lock bar insert, and that should be an M390 blade. Is that right? That is correct. Okay, awesome. That is correct, 100%. <laughs> beautifully done. I'm like, wait, wait, does this have a. And you know what? There's something. Uh, uh, I ask this question a lot, actually. It seems to come up to me a lot. Like, to me, there's something very special about the fact that this doesn't have a lock bar insert. It means that this engineering is so dialed in. And, uh, whatever they did to the, um, titanium lock face, uh, yes. is, is they did it just right. And it's, you know, it's, it's got a beautiful amount. It, everything about it is, is perfect <laughs> without, without having that, that little s- slop shim. I'm not, you yeah. know, no, I, yeah. It I, is I a good you, invention, man. but I, I really like that this thing is like a little bit. Oh, you're so spot on, man. I mean, like, I, like, I love my new, uh, my new Gen 6s, and then, and I get a new hinder every couple of weeks, and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you're right. And you can, I mean, the evidence is it. I, I love hinder knives. Um, me too. Love hinder knives. And, you know, the evidence is out there for use. It's not like, you know, everything that you see on, online for hinder knives is just like a, a hinder knife in a display case. Now they get people get down and dirty with those things, oh, yeah. and they, the, whether they have the new lock bar inserts or they have the standard titanium lock face, which is carbonized, and the geometry's been perfected, and you know Rick Hinder's pretty open about all that stuff. Um, people just go to town on those things, and they they're just fine, you know. So um, yeah, I, in my opinion, and I've said this before, it's cool that these new ones have the lock bar inserts, but do yeah. they need them? No, no, no. That, and that's that's actually the the beauty part. What do you, what do you think of the uh, the new uh, USA made blade uh, Warren Cliff um, half track? So I want to get. I I believe I will be uh, somebody. Uh, one of my viewers purchased one and messaged me, and they said, "Hey, I bought this. I want to send it to you because I I figured you'd want to look oh, at." It. And I was cool. like, "Yes." So. <laughs> um, uh, the I love that they have the now I love that like the one that you've got. It has that menacing appearance because the blade is straight. There's kind of like a line that you can draw with the body. Exactly. Yeah. That is the most aggressive blade shape that he does. <laughs> it's and it's in the biggest. <laughs> and it's cool. And you know what? It's utilitarian. Doing a, a push cut or a draw cut with that blade mm-hmm. is so satisfying. But this little um, half track, I didn't think that I would like the half track until I bought one. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this thing's a little tank, you know? And uh, this new one with this upswept blade, it makes me think that because of how they did the forward choil, uh, how the blade angles up, there might be more room for your finger and you're less likely to run it up on, on the blade. And at the same time, it might be angled in a way that if you're using it like I would use a Warren Cliff in a, in a utility, like, a, you know, working or whatever, using, yeah. doing those kind of cuts, it might be that the that that's why he did that angle so that you can bear down on it or so it's more it yeah. feels more organic when you're laying your finger on it that's what it looks like to me without worrying about snapping the tip at all because right. if you bear down too much you know it, you really in a way it allows you to to place more of your body weight over it as you're pulling you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes, yes as opposed yes. to the way this comes off uh, you know this is a you know this comes straight off the fist yes yes you know? definitely what about the maximus do you have that I don't, and I has that ever come through your hands? It absolutely, it's never come through my hands. But I was blown away that he. We're just geeking out about hinder knives right now. So (laughs) I'm so I didn't know that you're a hinder fan. That's awesome. I loved that he created a fully symmetrical folding dagger that was manual. And I mean, like, how many? You don't, you didn't. I I had I had not seen too many, um, if any at all, folding knives that could be sharpened on both blades. And safely, I mean, safely yeah. retracted back into the handle, right? And it, it looks so good. It was so aesthetically pleasing. Um, now I would, it, that kind of hourglass overlay on the G10, mm-hmm. I would prefer that it covered everything, but that's okay, you know? Yeah. But everything else about it, it's so pretty, you know? Yeah, it is. Um, I really, uh, I'm, I'm very, I'll tell you what, the, um, that's the one model 
for whatever reason that I really want to see on bearings. I don't know why. Yes, I kind of feel like I'm waiting for that. That's yeah. kind of my, like, not excuse not to get. I also kind of wish it were a little bit larger. I, I just tend towards, <laughs> yeah. like, slightly larger. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I kind of feel like I'll, I'll wait for the Gen whatever it's going to, Gen 2, I guess, when it, when yeah. it has the bearings on it. Uh, the, the only other knife I can think of that I would put on the same shelf is the Arch Nemesis, the Sharp by Design Arch Nemesis, you know. Beautiful, yes. beautiful, symmetrical. But I mean, that's that's a completely, uh, you know, w- those, those are eighteen hundred dollar knives, right, and they're very, right. very, you know, limited. But in terms of design, in terms of a, a double edged blade that retracts all the way into the handle without looking like it's got a giant handle or some right. weird blade ratio, yeah, those two are the only. And and so the one the one within reach happens to be by Hinderer, and to me, sure. that's that's just. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Isn't it weird how, like, uh, because in, in a folding knife, symmetry is not often, I mean, like, straight on symmetry is not something that you, you see very often. You see it in, um, the, uh, the Benchmade Infidel. Um, mm-hmm. you see it there. Yeah. But it, there's something that's really appealing about that symmetry. You don't see it in, um, like the, on the Microtech. Um, you don't see it oh, here because of the way God. that the, do you like that? The combat troodon, yeah. <laughs> this I just in, got in. this, and I've been just, just like it's been sitting in my lap while we watch the Marvel movies, <laughs> and uh, we're doing that thing where we watch the Marvel movies in chronological order, and then uh-huh. every four minutes and twenty seven seconds, I go, and my wife goes, "If you do that again, <laughs> we're done." You know, <laughs> that's you know, a familiar but- scenario. <laughs> <laughs> um sorry but, uh, but i just uh sorry <laughs> yeah oh sorry no my hand slipped and yeah. she's like i know how that operates your hand did not slip <laughs> um but uh yeah you don't get symmetry often with folding knives or uh some otfs unless they're an, an infill design so you look at the maximus and the what is the the deadlock uh trident it's a, a lot of times it's just it's exclusive to an otf because of how the mechanisms work but you see it and you're like oh that's so beautiful, yeah. you know, and I, I think in my mind that comes from the draw to the old, uh, swing guard stiletto knives that ah, were yes. symmetrical and they had that, I, I think of back to that, this, you're going to laugh, that <laughs> the weasel in the, um, who framed Roger Rabbit in the green oh. zoot suit that had the switchblade. I remember that as a kid and thinking, I'm not sure what's going on in this scene, but that knife is super cool. I want to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man. Well, the, um, the, I, I happened to just recently get a Microtech and I was, I was looking for an, a, uh, combat troodon double edged with the, uh, with the serrated top, right? Okay, okay. And, uh, I found it and I jumped on it on blade forums and, uh, it ended up, it came and I didn't, I didn't really read it. I wanted to see, you know, I saw what I wanted to see and I got a regular mm-hmm. troodon. So that, ah, that's okay. fine. It's a little, it's, uh, but it's got all sorts of binging and banging and ringing inside of the the spring. I got to send it back. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, and well, have them work on it, and and I'll get to experience, uh, you know, doing something with Microtech on on the warranty side. So that's there you go. I've heard that Microtech's warranty is great. That's uh, what I've heard is very positive. So I think that's cool. And you know what? Um, have you handled the full combat Truidon, the big no. one? No. Okay. So this is awesome, and it gives you that feeling. It's like a you know, it's like vi- driving a, um, like a huge lifted truck with 650 horsepower. You know, <laughs> right. that's what it feels like. It's just, it's like, bam. And, and it, it feels good. But then you, you realize, wow, this is not a knife that I can carry in my office. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. That, Especially that true it on. Yeah. It, that, that true it on though. I think if you get a chance to handle this big one, it will make you love that true it on a lot more. I yep. just, recently well not recently it was like eight months ago handled a truodon the little one for the first time this is my second combat truodon and i realized i was like wow this is actually a bit because you get that more robust feeling than the ultra tech or the utx 85 the ultra tech's a big long thing but it's a lot slender the truodon it still has that kind of wide body that more robust sort of more substantial feeling but it's small enough that you can just if you really want to carry an otf it's small enough that it's the size that you can justify it. So I don't know. That's just my opinion. You'll love the big one, but I think you'll appreciate the true one. You know? Oh, I, I I do. I mean, once this is fixed. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like my lightning OTF, uh, <laughs> but it is such a beautiful little jewel of a knife. It's it's just you know I, yeah. I have to get it fixed, and I will I will keep it. 
I will keep it for sure. So, awesome. I mean, this this makes me wonder what what are your criteria for breaking down a knife for deciding whether a knife is good or bad? You know, kind of, kind of explain that. You know how like when you get a new knife and everybody has this um this checklist, right? We all have our little things that we look for. We we check, we make sure is that centered? Mm, it looks a little bit off. Nope, that's a shadow. You know, we <laughs> do that. And then we check, like if you're me, I check the percentage of lockup. Why? I don't know. Because I remember the early days of the hinderer knives and people being obsessed with early lockup, yeah. despite it actually being kind of a, not the best thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want it to be too early, but I, I liked to see that. And then I check for detent lash. Um, I checked it to, you know, wait, wait, to make sure I'm sorry. No What's detent lash? Is that play when it's closed? Yeah, like, um, and I call it detent lash, but I don't know if that's the proper term for it. I don't like feeling the blade wiggle around. I, if you've, if you've never checked for this, I'm going to give you another thing to nitpick every time you get <laughs> <Nice>. it. <laughs> but, um, I feel for wiggle in the, I don't like to shake the knife and hear a rattle in that. Oh. There's play there. Yeah. And then I also check, of course, you know, up and down. I'll, I check all that stuff, but then, then I start looking. If it passes all that, I start looking for little tiny things that are pleasing. You know, in this case, the Praxis is a, a, um, a flipper. And I like to see shouldering back there. I like to see it wrap around the stop pin. I like mm-hmm. to see that, the, to me, the size of the stop pin is, you know, robust enough, I guess, for me. I check the, the pivot, uh, the size of the Torx heads, the body screws. I check the pocket clip, whether or not the pocket clip screws are recessed. I have all these little things. And um, if it has all that good stuff or a, or a good, you know, 80% of it, and it feels pretty good in hand and, you know, it flips well. A lot of this stuff has just been nailed so often by so many of these um, budget brands. And just knives in general, they hit so many of these these little things. Mm-hmm. Companies like Civivi, Bestec are great examples of some of these um, these, these budget or, or these Chinese companies with these budget knives just doing everything automatically correctly. Then I'll go, okay, this is good enough to, to like talk about, to put in my pocket and see how I feel about using it in my setting and then i try to think about it from other people's perspectives and and if it it's it's weird it's like no particular scoring system it's like in my mind it's like does this get me going does this make me feel positive because if if i i don't want to fake it you know i don't because yeah. people will they'll call me out on it you know well that that's actually what uh what i'm really interested in once once all of those uh boxes are checked and and it's a you know you've determined it's a quality knife in terms of its build and and kind of the thought that went into to the little details what is that what is that little magical thing that makes you love it or not if it's a um in in again it depends on you know the 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 price um you know what what price bracket it's in i've always said that i feel like my drop off point for my likeliness to use a knife without worrying about putting a scratch on it, putting it, you know, it's, it's right around the $150 mark, something like that. And the, the less it's worth, uh, or the less it costs, then the more, you know, the less protective I am of it. Mm-hmm. So as it, it's more than that. So I start thinking of it, I start thinking of different things like, you know, the, the little, the fine details in the, in the, uh, the finishes, you know, on the blade, the materials that are used. Um, but it, it's weird. It, it's kind of, it's this weird foggy area that I can't explain, you know, but, um, basically what it comes down to is, will this knife go into my pocket with one hand? Will it, does it have a good carry profile? Is it, is it a, uh, does it feel like, I mean, like, am I, am I so overly aware of it being in my pocket that I can't focus on whatever else I'm doing? You know, I want it to be there. I want it to exist as a tool, right? I don't want it to be distracting. I don't, not, you know, in terms of how much it costs, mm-hmm. its profile, anything like that. I want it to be, oh, I need to cut something. I want it to come out of my pocket. I want it to deploy readily. I want to make that cut. I want there to be, you know, I want it to do what a knife does. And then I want to be able to put it away, put it back in my pocket and, and go on, you know, with my day. And if I feel like I can do that without having to mess around with something, some weird thing or the pocket clips doing this weird thing. You know, if I feel like there's minimal hang up, then to me, it's a good knife. And for the most part, most of the knives that I look at do that. It's, you know, it, a lot of times it comes down to, you know, how expensive is it? Is it readily available? You know, those other things make it more difficult. Right. Um, so I, I guess, does that kind of answer your question? Well, yeah, it does. It does. So 
people must come to you all the time then with, uh, you know, what should I get? You know, <laughs> Christmas is coming up. What should I get? What? So from 2019, what are your, what are your picks? What are your favorite knives? And, oh, and boy. also tell me what you think, uh, is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I said this, I, um, in my most overrated, I did a video, uh, my most overrated knives. I don't know for 2019. I have a really hard, cause like, I mean, I'm sure if you've looked back at like the last 20 videos that I've done, I don't necessarily go after the newest stuff. Mm -hmm. I go after the stuff that catches my eye. Like I just, I just reviewed a, a ZT 0630 CF that's been discontinued that for a while. I know it's a great knife. And I was like, I love that thing. I don't care if, if it's not available. I just want to, I just want to talk about it. So anyways, I don't want to get off track, but I, I'm not very good at knowing exactly what came out in 2018, 2019. But for right now, a knife that I would recommend to everybody that I think is a, a reasonable price and in, in terms of, I guess, people who, who would be listening uh, to us, the, uh, the Ritter RSK MK1 mm, G2. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. That is such a great value. An American production knife. It has, I mean, you know, I love Benchmade, but they did, their, their able lock is incredible. It feels smooth. You get that drop shut action out of the box. You yeah, get that. And it is, it is shape. so, I have that, I have it right here. It oh, is wonderful. so solid. It is so <laughs> solid when it's open. I mean, it's, it feels great in hand and that, and that, uh, that radial, um, pattern, you know, coming from I the pivot that. is beautiful. And, and actually, I like the length of the handle and the contour of the handle just a little bit better, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It, so, a great evolution, I'd say. Oh, yes, absolutely. And then, of course, the Civivi Praxis, that is my, um, and that, I think that, that was 2018. But, uh, the Civivi Praxis, man, you know, if you're, if, if, if you're, uh, looking for just a, just a great knife under 50 bucks, that knife is just amazing. I love it. And I'm trying to think of one that's, I'm trying to get, give you a, give you a high, a medium, and a low. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for the high one, uh, if there for a little bit, the, um, and I don't know if this is still available. I saw the Ferrum Forge Archbishop mm. 2.0 was available for a, a discounted price on Black Friday or something. I don't know if, if they still have those out floating around. Oh my goodness. That's, that is an amazing knife right up there with the ZT 0562 uh, TI. Uh, oh, just gives oh. me that, that, you know, feeling of, I got an amazing knife for this. It it cost me two fifty to two eighty, but I got a great knife. You know, I got a very capable knife. You know. Speaking of which, I'm dying to get my hands on a on a. Uh, sorry, what's the name? Their their latest one. I was gonna say Metamorph. It's not Metamorph. The, oh, the Protec produced. Uh, oh, oh, the Mordax. The Mordax. The Mordax. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Mordax. No, it's okay. To me, it's, that there's thing. There's so is... many collaborations. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, yeah. At least, at least they have names and are, don't have yeah. these long number designations. Oh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, that to me, that knife just, oh, God. Yeah. I, I got to get my hands on one of those. It looks really appealing. I do wish it was hollow ground, but I understand. Right. Right. <laughs> Did you see that? So I, I gave away, well, there's this big long thing about the, the giveaway on the Mordex, um, that I did on my channel, oh, but yeah, I, I always, I, I buzzed about the original, uh, mid tech Mordex. Right. And then they, that's what they built it off. They just kind of, they brought it down a little bit. It wasn't this big hulking thing. Mm -hmm. And they did it with the aluminum body and the 20 CV blade. And but that they button also, lock, huh? yes. Oh, and they, and that was the best button lock that I've ever handled. It, it felt so good. And you know, button locks, people are kind of, they're not sure if that's a really dependable lock. I, it felt super solid to me. I, I would have no reserves with it, but they did it. Anyways, they did a titanium version of it. Did you see that? No, I did not. They did it, and and maybe I'm. No, I hope I'm. I hope I'm not just remembering or think or dreaming and remembering a dream. But I'm pretty sure they did a titanium button lock version of that, um, that Mordax, that Protec uh, Mordax deal, and it was extremely expensive. Mm. But man, did it make me drool! Yes, oh my yes. Gosh. I mean, it, it's beautiful. It's simple. It looks capable. I love. I love that the uh, that the width of the blade, you know, top to bottom, spine to edge. Is a little bit fatter than the handle. I love that. It's kind of like the Roxy Four, yeah, yeah. Todd Knife and Tool Roxy Four. I, that's an aesthetic that appeals to me and automatically makes me think that's going to be a good knife. You know, <laughs> like for 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 cutting threads off of my collars exactly. and such. <laughs> exactly. You know, but isn't it? You know, I I consider that such a blessing when I look down and there's a thread. It's usually down where you have been sliding the knife in and out of your pocket. Yeah. And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. a thread. 
And I'm like, I'll just use my knife that's conveniently <laughs> located. <laughs> yeah. And creating the problem. It's, yeah, boy, that's, yeah. that's funny, man. Yep. So, so, uh, with, you mentioned best tech Riot we earlier. Um, yes. in your opinion, what do you think of the soul of a custom knife, you know, and then how it's interpreted through these amazing, com- well, these companies that are making these amazing knives? It, do you have any, um, I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but I, I know does the soul mean. get lost somewhere in there? So you have people who really love, and I have, I have a very, I have a couple of really good friends that I have, have absolutely fueled the content of my channel. And we've talked about this extensively. There is a, there's a level of joy that people get owning the real thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the, the, the XM18 and the ZTO562. They're both, I mean, let's be honest, they're both going to do the same thing. I mean, maybe there are, maybe there are slight advantages with, with a Hinder XM18, you know, that could be proven with extensive testing. I don't know. Proven cooler. Sure. Yeah. You, but you, but you know, I like knowing, and I love the 0562, but I like knowing that I have the real thing. Now, if we're, but that's just the example there. The thing about owning the full custom is, um, I've always said, you know, people who put all their value into the utility. What is it capable of doing? I care nothing for anything else, the aesthetics, the time that went into it. I only care about what it's capable of. Then a custom knife is not for you. And you will not, you'll, you won't get that sense of enjoyment, right? But other people like the idea of this item was handmade. This item has blood, sweat, and tears that went into it. Uh, the person who created it cares about it. They, they put their love into it, you know, and on top of that, it's hard to get right? Mm-hmm. It's in limited supply. These are not stamp and pressed and being fired out of a, a factory. Um, so I have something that I love for all of these reasons and they're not super readily available. Now, a lot of people look at that and they don't, they don't like that. They want it to be available. So we have these production versions and now we have companies like we and Riot who are unbelievable. They're, they're the the end result is such high quality a lot of times it's almost indistinguishable mm-hmm. from the actual custom and i i kind of like that you know i i like that both sides of the spectrum are are happy you know i think that's cool i vacillate and and i think i'm settling back into you know being thrilled with the opportunity to have these designs at at a lesser rate at a lesser price point you know that whole question of soul sometimes you know sometimes i look at custom knives and i i got to be totally honest i have a couple and i'm very proud of them um but they're kind of made to you know what i wanted um sometimes i look at the most expensive and elaborate custom knives and with the with the different bolster materials and then handle materials and then damascus and different colored hardware and everything it starts to look like Mr. Furley to me, like with all these different <laughs> patterns and like plaids and polka dots and everything. Like, yeah, no doubt these are all beautiful and, and highly valuable materials and they're, they're difficult to work with. And, you know, and it takes an eye to put all that stuff together. But to, sure. to me, it's too much. You know, it's like, right. just, just have like an understated handle with an, a spectacular blade or something. So maybe that's a little too much soul, you know, and then. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. I always use car analogies. It's, I, I saw that picture. Have you ever seen the, the Bugatti Veyron or the Bugatti yes. Chiron? Yes. Okay. They did a version of it that was like mirror gold on the outside. <laughs> wow. Just in case but, you missed the point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But it's, it's like, well, I, I appreciate for th- this, this thing that exists that it's, I, I, but I'm not sure why it exists. It's not, it's, it's beautiful. I'm sure to a lot of people, it's not beautiful to me, but yeah. I can appreciate it, you know? Yeah. yeah. All that being said, I would love to have a knife with uh, mammoth ivory on it. Oh. That to me is like, oh, God, that's, that's cool. awesome. That's so awesome. Uh, uh, tell me where you think the Metal Complex channel is headed in the future. Like what, what kind of things do you want to take on? Do you have new series in mind? I, I do. So the, the Quest thing, like I couldn't believe how popular that was. I said it on the last episode. I said I'm tackling kind of a polarizing subject considering – the knives that I'm talking about, this hypothetical ideal knife is purely based on what I want and what I think is good. And it, it's this, this price range is it's flooded with amazing models already. Tell listeners what the price, what the challenge was, what the quest was. So there were, it was 11 episodes where I tackled a whole bunch of different topics, you know, the materials uh, of the, the handle that, I mean, down to like how I wanted the liners to be 
the, the size of the, uh, the hardware, how many pieces overall I thought it should be. Um, the shape of the blade, all this stuff. I, I just, I went into insane detail about this. And, um, I tried to let everybody know the whole time, like, hey, this is just based on what I want, you know, kind of, it's just to let you know how I'm approaching this. And I said, uh, for the sake of getting everything, you know, talking about everything that I think I need to talk about, I'm going to say, and this, this did make it, it, it uh, rubbed a few people the wrong way. I'm going to say that budget is being defined in this series as anything under $100. Now, I didn't actually conclude anywhere near 100 mm-hmm. but I had to talk about all the different, you know, because the, there are like uh, like some of Kershaw's USA knives and some of uh, like the Civivi Cetera that's mm-hmm. near $70. That's right there where p- some people are like, is it a budget knife or is it turning into yeah. a higher me- mid-range, mid to high-end production knife? So, yeah, so that was kind of... Um, what I did there with that. I feel like there was another question there that I didn't completely. Well, answer. well, do you, do you have other series in mind that you're? Oh, yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about a few things. I, I've had a couple, um, suggestions. Some, some people said you should do, um, the, the quest for the perfect slip joint. And then somebody else involved it. <laughs> they said you should do the quest for the perfect legal almost everywhere knife. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And I thought that, that would be interesting to explore. But I, I want to keep doing what I love because the, I think the, the, the best parts for me is I have a, I have a, an enormous fascination with this stuff and I, I get so into it. If you can't tell, you know, just like everybody, everybody who's, I'm not special. Everybody who likes this stuff is very, is deeply passionate about it. And when I talk about things that are, you know, amidst all those things I'm generally passionate about, when it's something I'm really, really into, it, uh, I don't have to try at all, you know, tw- talking for 20 minutes. I have a problem keeping it under 20 <laughs> minutes on my channel because I get so excited about this yeah. stuff. And so I guess in the future, um, I love this, the discussion topics. I love doing the unboxings. I, of course, love doing the reviews. I love doing the top 10 stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I, I suppose if there's anything that I want to change, I want to go outside and do some usage stuff. Even, you know, and I'll, and I'll tell people like, listen, I, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I want to, I want to use it. I want to show these things in action. Here's the news. Uh, no one else does either. You know, <laughs> they know as much as you do, but, but it's fun to watch, man. Who doesn't yeah. like watching someone break down a box? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, exactly. You missed a spot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think, uh, it'll be much the same. Uh, the people seem to be reacting positively. Um, People, you know, I, I just can't believe that people care to listen. And I'm sure, you know, I, I'm sure I sound like every reviewer, it, you know, it's like, what? Like people, people are watching my stuff. That's crazy. You know? Well, I think, I think people like to know that the people they're watching, uh, you know, you're in, in a way you're a, a consumer advocate and, uh, you know, people obviously watch you because they like your personality. If they didn't like your personality, they tune out and go somewhere else. But I think people like knowing, because I do, uh, when I'm watching a, one of my favorite knife reviewers, that the person knows what they're talking about. And then, and then you watch a few videos, you get to know their taste, and you can kind of compare and contrast your taste against theirs and, and kind of gauge whether you want that knife or not. But, you know, if you want to find out about the quality of a knife, you go to someone like you. That's kind of the, I think, kind of the, a bedrock. Uh, in terms of your collection, where do you see it headed? I, it's funny. I was just talking about, um, <laughs> just talking about this on Instagram. I, I was, a, I, I made a meme of, um, I found a meme template of a Bart Simpson falling down, um, a flight of stairs and each step I put on the top step, I put the knife my dad gave me. And the next one said, yeah. <laughs> um, gas station knives. And the next one was like production knives. And it goes all the way down to the, and Bart's like just teetering on custom knives at the very bottom. And that apparently resonated with a bunch of people. And that's what's currently happening to me. I am, <laughs> this my my friend Jeff is sending me Jeff and and uh, Mr. Whiskey and uh, uh, my my buddy um, uh, Kyle and um, my buddy Shaker are all sending me the craziest stuff that I have ever seen and um, I'm all of a sudden you know like it's it's like I held off I was like I'm okay with looking at these things on Instagram I don't need to buy them and now uh, they're being um, force fed to me by um, some really really cool viewers and I'm like. Maybe I do need this. Maybe I, maybe I should just sell, uh, five or six of my knives and get, uh, something crazy, you know? 
you just did a video on the shamwari. What, yes. what did you think of that knife? Oh my gosh, it blew me away. And I think um, that my reaction when I unboxed it and the very first time that I flipped it. So a front flipper is a very foreign thing to me. I don't have a lot of practice with it. It's also kind of, not super new, but kind of new. It's not like a, it's not like a flipper. We haven't had, the, these companies have, haven't had as much time to refine and perfect that mechanism as they have the flipper. So it's like, it's weird to the person who's handling it. And it's like the, these companies are still kind of experiencing with it. And then I get my hands on a chamois and it's like, uh, Gareth Bull was like, I got this. <laughs> Just give it. And that, that it was that the knife itself was almost like, don't worry, buddy. I think I actually explained it like that. And it just goes, bam. And it kicked out. And it, the, the beautiful, that talk about beauty and simplicity. That knife has some of the best looking lines and it's contoured and that, that just perfect. It, the blade is so simple and the handle is so simple. But at the same time, there's all these like obvious complexities, all of these like it's it was so carefully crafted and that deployment mechanism, the detent strength mixed with the mass and length of the blade and the position of the uh, the part, the, the front flipper, I guess, the part that you're supposed to use. Everything was so well thought out and it, it was the the culmination of all that. And the fact that I did it first try with while being kind of hesitant, number one, because it's an expensive knife, and number two, because I don't really know what I'm doing, and it just went bam. And I was like, I love this. I want this. <laughs> I have to have this. <laughs> so uh, someone who's we, is it we or Riyadh is going to be producing? I think it's we. Yeah. I th- will you, will I you get one of those? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, that is uh, that is absolutely a, um, a knife that I'll get. It's like when... Um, when Riot did the um, the Steelcraft series Bodega, oh, yeah. I was yeah. like, "Yep, a hundred percent." Because Jim Skelton made that that made me want that thing. His big the the big red, he made me want that thing so bad. And I was like, "Well, I, I can't I can't afford that." And then Riot was like, "Hey, no problem. We'll do this version." That's, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying is, is very, very similar to the real thing. And, and, and you can have it for much less. And I finally got my hands on it and it, it scratched that itch for me. I think I will get given Wee's reputation, um, overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Um, I, I think I will definitely own that. Well, uh, we're about to wrap up, but I wanted to ask you, uh, sometimes I like to ask if people have any good knife stories. Could be, uh, <laughs> could be funny, scary, whatever. Yeah, I have, I have one, um, I've shared it before, but it's, it's my favorite to tell. Uh, and I think that, you know, when, when you, when you enjoy telling a story, it, it, it translates better, you know? So, um, when I, and it's a knife that I showed, when I acquired that knife for the first time, um, uh, my best friend, I was, I was, um, I think I was seven or eight. And my best friend got his first pocket knife. And I remember thinking, you have a pocket knife? What? I want a pocket knife. So <laughs> that went on for a while. And, my, my, uh, if anytime we wanted to do something that wasn't allowed at, at our house, we went over to my grandma's house because my grandma just let us do whatever. You know, yeah. we want to jump on the bed while you're eating candy. Go ahead. No problem. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're digging through, um, the closet in my dad's old room. My brother and I, my little brother, and I'm nine, I think, or maybe eight or nine. And I come across this little box with a bunch of stuff in there. There's a little pocket knife in there and it's the one that I just showed you. And I said, uh, grandma, can I have that knife? And and she said, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> sure, kid. Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> so, so I'm playing with it and jumping on the bed and, and eating candy, you know, like, uh, like it's just totally safe. And, um, so my dad comes to pick us up and, and I said, look what grandma gave me. And he was like, well, no, you can't have that. Uh, and, uh, you know, so there was that whole thing and he, he took it away and, and eventually he did take an opportunity to sit down with me and say, cause I asked him about it all the time. I said, dad, well, can I have that? Like, when are you going to give it back? You know, and he finally sat down and talked to me and he said, if you're going to use this, you can use it outside at home. You, um, you know, I want to know where it is at all times. I want to know if it's in your pocket, what you plan to use it for. This is a tool. You know, I, I remember him saying, you know, this isn't something that you, Use for anything else other than, you know, essentially a, a task, a cutting task, right? Mm-hmm. So almost immediately, he finally gives it to me. And he's, he's, he's at his desk and it's been up on top of his desk out of reach this whole time. He finally gives it to me. And I think it's like, I'm, I'm nine. And, um, 
we had just ordered a new refrigerator, and so we had the box, this big, tall refrigerator box. I immediately go outside and kick all the blades out, so it's essentially like a throwing star at this point. <laughs> and I'm hucking it at this box, trying to get it to stick in it. And I, and, you know, and and a few times I was successful, and I remember thinking, "This is so cool. This is what Pop and I were for." <laughs> and my dad comes storming out of the house. He must have gone to the kitchen and noticed it, and he was like. What are you doing? This is exactly what I was talking about. This is not a cutting task. You're just throwing it. So, um, he, long story short, he took it away and I did not get that knife back until almost my 11th birthday. Oh, man. And, uh, that was, um, it, it, that was, that was heartbreaking because all of my friends were in scouts. They all had pocket knives. Oh. And I was like, my dad took mine because I was, Hucking it as at a uh, refrigerator box. He, he didn't even know you you were being responsible, <laughs> learning how to throw that like a throw. You know, it, defend exactly. the house. Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and, oh, and, and it has to happen as soon as he walks out. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could have just waited until he left, but no. So one last thing, metal. I I want to do a little speed round with you. I'm going to ask you, uh, and I just want a one word answer. Okay. All right. Fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Washers. Tip up or tip down? <laughs> Hang on, I gotta look. <laughs> tip up. <laughs> Tanto or Bowie? Bowie. Hollow ground or flat ground? Flat ground. Full size or small? Full size. Gentleman's or tactical? Tactical. Out the front or out the side? Out the front. We or ZT? ZT. We are Riot. Riot. Benchmade or Spider Co. Spider Co. Milled titanium or spring clip. Milled titanium. Carbon fiber or micarta. Micarta. Good answer. Finger choil or no choil. Finger choil. Form or function. Function. And then lastly, your desert island knife. That doesn't mean you have to survive on a desert island. That means you get one knife for the rest of your life. What is it? Boy, it's pro you know, it's probably going to be the SE5. It's uh the SE5 with that quarter inch stock blade. Um it's got the micarta, it's got a 1095 blade. It's something mm -hmm. that I could sharpen on a rock. It's a pry bar, it's a hammer, it's uh it's a hunting tool. I can baton wood with it. And this is all based on all of the amazing YouTube videos that I have watched <laughs> on this kind of stuff from the comfort of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know that others can do it, so you can too. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> well, Metal, it's been a pleasure having you on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thank you, sir, for coming on. I appreciate it. Everyone check out Metal Complex on Instagram and also the main place I know him from, his amazing YouTube channel. Check him out. Awesome. Thank you. Visit The Knife Junkie at thenifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. And we're back on The Knife Junkie podcast. Jim, the knife newbie person, along with Bob, the knife junkie, DeMarco, and Bob, a good interview there with uh, with Metal. <laughs> you guys uh, really just oh, kind of hit it off. It sounds like you were long-lost friends. Well, it was just great to super geek out with someone uh, about knives. And uh, a thing that I really like about, about Metal is... Uh, he is very positive. You you don't find him trashing knives too much or, or, you know, he's honest with his opinions on things. But I don't know. It, it always seems like an upbeat review when I'm watching, even if he's not thrilled about it. But I think like uh, like many of the reviewers I really uh, watch and respect, he pretty much reviews the stuff that he's got something valuable to say about or mm -hmm. or really likes. But, right. you know, he's never, uh, he's always positive. Great guy. And he, uh, it was, it was fun to geek out on hinderers. I, I, I realized he liked them because he's, uh, he's got that one XM18 that he digs so much, but I didn't realize we were going to go down, uh, such a rabbit hole. And it, it was uh, a pleasure. Not that you minded any one little bit, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. All right. Well, like we said, uh, show notes uh, will have the link to Metal's YouTube channel as well as uh, his Instagram. So you can find the links to find Metal Complex on uh, YouTube and Instagram. And remind you again, please call the listener line at 724-466-4487. Leave us a recorded message, your holiday greetings, your holiday wish list, your Happy New Year thoughts, whatever you'd like to uh, to uh, to leave and, and hear that on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. That's planned for our Christmas Day show, which is our supplemental issue. So again, that show will be as long or as short as you make it. 
because if we don't get any calls from you, we won't have a show. So we'd love to hear from you uh, with your holiday thoughts, wishes. And again, please be sure to leave your name, promote your website, your, your knife company, whatever it might be. We truly do not mind and would like to give you the publicity. And just we would like to get those by Friday, December 20th. So Friday, December 20th, if you could get those uh, messages to the listener line. Jim, what about emails? Are emails going to work, too, if people want to email those messages to us? Well, it won't be their voice, but they could, uh, you know, email you at bob at com, and then we can read them. So if, if someone is more comfortable just shooting an email message, we can do that. Roger that. All right. That's going to wrap it up for episode number 68 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Call or email, please, by Friday, December 20th. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.